This case is awesome because I love it when younger people are independent and know exactly what they want. This guy is a Columbia University student. When I asked him, how'd you find about me? You just never know in this day and age, like where? He's like, through the Alumni Association, somebody at Columbia told me about you. And I'm like, who? He's like, I don't know, but I'm here today. And I'm like, that's awesome. So let's get into this case because it's gonna show you how to take a small teeth bonded smile into a beautiful, gorgeous, bright smile. So what we have going on here, this guy, just take note, is about six foot two, right? And so what we have here, as we always discuss, is we like it when the teeth are following the architecture of the lips. So in his case, instead of following the architecture of the lip, which goes this way, right, it goes up. And when he smiles, believe it or not, this is how much tooth he shows. When he smiles big, that's how much tooth he shows. Like, and by the way, I want you to know, and this is not happening often, but this right here, this right here, and all of this right there, that is all bonding. This is all bonding. It's unbelievable. Listen, like you, this is how you're born. Sometimes you're born with big teeth. Sometimes you're born with small teeth. You can't really predict exactly how and what things are going to look like as you get older. So in his case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating some more dominance in the front component of his smile. And then secondarily, we're going to really be changing the color of his teeth, which is huge. By the way, what this is going to do not only to his teeth, but also to his actual lips. I know it's crazy. This is his smile from the side. Notice the profile of what his lower lips are. He needs more support right here at the front aspect of his teeth he needs more support so i'm taking his teeth from angling back and we're actually going to be giving him a little bit of support this way and this way so then as the lips rise up there's more support and the teeth is getting are getting longer so all of a sudden this entire smile is going to completely change so here are the teeth when they're small no, no work has been done yet. Like I mentioned to you earlier, this is all bonding. We got to clean all of that out. And the goal is to make all of these teeth pretty much this length going forward. So what I did here and what you're going to be able to appreciate is what I created in the mouth is called an intraoral mock-up, right? And so as I show you this, notice what happens as I go to the next slide. That's exactly what we created is length here. This is half the side that I didn't do anything yet. And this is half the side where I did a mock-up. This mock-up for me takes about four or five minutes, right? This is at the beginning of his appointment before we get started. And then I go ahead and I complete and I refine the mock-up. I make it even better. I get the lengths that I want. I make measurements because this is now a tooth that is of normal size, I would say in the 10 and a half millimeter range. Whereas the tooth that he had right here is unfortunately, this is how he was born, with an 8.5 millimeter range. And in dentistry, in aesthetics, the nice smile, an average smile of about front tooth being anywhere from nine and a half to 11 millimeters in length. And so for somebody this tall to have that small of a tooth and also have a heavy lip, it's going to take it's going to take some aesthetics and some cosmetics to get that done so that's me showing you again that's the length that we have and these are the veneers so look at the transparency the translucency that we can build in here the brightness a nice pop right in the body this these line angles right longer teeth creating a natural appearance and a natural look that is what's gonna make a difference here. The reason I show you this underside view, it's really, really important. This porcelain is all additive. This is additive. That means I didn't need to shave the edge of the tooth. So when you're looking at his smile right here, I didn't make that tooth shorter. I maintained the exact length of that tooth. I cleaned it out. I got rid of the bonding. And then I just added porcelain to that. Here's what happens when I remove half of my temporaries on this side and I match it to half of the porcelain. So this 
is what I always say is one of the most challenging components of the smile makeover is predictability. Making sure that we can predictably have our temporaries and what our patients are gonna be expecting to what their final outcomes are gonna be. And so in this case, this is his final aesthetics, the beautiful smile, natural translucency, natural textures, beautiful shapes, things looking like real teeth. This is where we started. Remember that reverse smile. This is now his actual real beautiful smile. Look how much less straining he is in order to get us this smile. Look at this smile, look how tight his upper lip is, right? Tightness, that's how when you smile really big, you gotta go like this. But when you have like a nice, natural, beautiful smile, your lips are, your collagen of your lips are in a really nice position. And that's exactly what's going on here. Remember, we added a little bit of bulk, right? His lower teeth, his upper teeth are angled backwards a bit, and then his upper lip is angling this way. And if we analyze how that looks now by creating this beautiful arc of the tooth, the shape of them, and the silhouette of natural teeth. This guy's about to um, graduate college. He is extremely bright, independent, and it's an honor for me to be able to help him pass through the rest of his life with a gorgeous smile.